guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Holter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. I'm here at, my, uh, here at The Bio Dude Houston, and I have someone, or a really cool critter in front of me here. I would like you to meet our new resident. It's a uh, blue tongue skink. We don't know of the sex just yet, and the reason that we're keeping this little gem is because there's something really special about us. So we're trying to come up with a name, and we're going to be asking the viewers and doing a Facebook poll here in the next couple days as what's going to be the best name. So we're thinking, thinking along the lines of Ron Swanson, Lieutenant Dan, Legolas, a bunch of stuff. So if you think of a cool name, let us know. Something that's really cool about this blue tongue is we only have three legs. So as part of growing the BioDude Houston, I really only sell captive bred animals. However, I've always wanted a blue tongue skink, and I did have the ability to bring in um, a couple young, uh, uh, younger ones from one of my suppliers, um, and, and, I, and they are, like, unfortunately, wild caught, which almost all of your young blue tongues are. It's very hard to find captive bred baby blue tongues. Uh, so what's really cool about this guy is that when we get them in, uh, you know, he came in a little messed up, and he's a, uh, he or she is a trooper. So unfortunately, our leg was completely broken to the point when there was so much swelling from a compound fracture that we had to put this little, little one under anesthesia and physically amputate the leg. And let me tell you, we, we did really well. We had to go on antibiotics and get all, all, all the good medical treatment. But also during our time here, they've been completely dewormed, you know, uh, throughout, the, throughout the course of the entire week. There you go. Yeah, he's chilling. So let me show you guys over here first our, uh, how we're having them for sale here at the BioDude. Uh, we are keeping some of them in here in a 36, 18, 18. They're honestly not here longer than two. This is the, they've been here about three weeks, which is the absolute longest. Um, and we, I expect them to be gone by the end of the month. Um, but we keep them in here. We give them an assortment of foods, which I'll show you. But when we're going through our deworming process, you know, this is something that, again, I don't sell wild-caught animals, but I had this opportunity, and I really wanted to have them for the store, as well as some for me. So this is how, when we're going through our deworming process and quarantine process, we're doing 100% spag with changeouts. And I actually have a group of fat tails that I'm working with right now, as you can see, that we're going through their quarantine and deworming process. So they're getting their panic here getting checked by, you know, my wife, all that good stuff. So I want to put them back. All right, I don't want to get sidetracked. So now let's go back to the blue tongue skink build. So as I was saying, this is a four by two by two cage. I am going to be utilizing my terra firma as well as a high level of sphagnum moss with some biodegradables mixed in. Biggest thing you need to rem remember about blue tongues is they're omnivores. They are big time opportunists. So if you provide them edibles, they will eat it for the most part. There are some people that keep blueies that their blueies don't touch the plants within the enclosure. And there's other people that have blueies that they're replacing some of their plants every single month because they're just getting picked apart. So this little dude right here, we are currently raising him or her uh, on partially roaches, hornworms, uh, and some waxworms occasionally. And they were also using the rapashi bluey buff or buffet. Buffet, excuse me. And then what we're doing for an enticement, especially during the deworming period, is we started getting in these pro bugs that Rapashi distributes. And I'm really impressed with these guys. And I mix this in, I mix these in with the actually Bluey Buffet, and we get an extremely good feeding response from them, from all of them. So it's, it's a good option for blue tongue keepers because you can you know, give them a variety. And you and I both know that when keeping reptiles, opportunity, and variety in diet and making sure that you're supplementing appropriately is the direction you always want to go. Uh, and, and we now also have the cages enclosure, which I'm really excited for. So this is my four by two by two BioDude exclusive by cages. So, you know, one thing I love about Zach and his passion for what he does is the quality of the product. Our cages are the only cages that are PVC to our knowledge that come that ship flat that come with tempered glass doors. Number two, this clear, this brace right here has the same structural integrity to be able to handle the weights necessary, but instead of having it be black right down the middle, cutting off your field of view, it's that nice, solid, clear piece. 
Now, this is the four-inch substrate lip. If you are putting an adult blue tongue skink in here, I'd recommend the seven. Now, I'm using the four-inch because, A, this is not him's personal or final enclosure. At the end of the day, our final enclosure is going to be a, a six by two by two for, you know, once we get larger. But I kind of want to track and see how he does with only having three legs, so we're going a little bit lighter in here. Now, as far as the lighting in here is concerned, I have it set up very, very particular. We are starting with an 80 watt power sun UVB bulb. So we're gonna have UVB coming down right now. Um, if you look up in here, I have two of my 24 inch solar grow fixtures. The solar grow fixture in the front includes a 6% Arcadia bulb. This is the 22 inch. This is a T5. And then in the back, that fixture has a plant bulb that creates 6,500 Kelvin. Um, I think around, I got I to gotta, I gotta look, look at the box on the lumen rating because I don't know on the top of my head. Um, and then as far as the light fixture on the inside, we are using the Arcadia Pro ceramic lamp and holder bracket. So I like these because they're ceramic and they can handle up to 250 watts. Um, if you have a snake or if you're using an animal that's pretty active, I highly recommend you put a cage over the bulb. But just keep in mind, those cages, they take up a lot of space. So you pretty much have to have a flat rock or something of the like right here. As we continue to monitor the heat, I'm then going to be looking at a 50 watt power sun, excuse me, 50 watt halogen as a potential swap to see you know, if we would have to make any changes, but I'm really confident that, th that this will do the job with the amount of circulation and with the air in the backs that Zach put in here. So let's get to building. Okay, so now I'm gonna start building. So you guys can see I, I have my firma down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be very careful to make sure that I do not get substrate in the glass trap. I'm also not going to dump the substrate where the bulb is. I'm going to so that way I don't accidentally hit the bulb. So I'm going to move these two over here nice and easy. And luckily I got all the firma already done and set up for me here in these bins. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and I'm going to dump in I'm gonna go, so this is about 36, 36. Should be about four, four total 36 quart bags in here. So something I can tell you guys that I've been working on is I'm really close to having flat rate shipping be on the website. You spend $100 flat rate shipping of, well, I'm still figuring out that rate, but it's gonna be between 10 and 15 bucks. So expect that to launch by Black Friday, I promise. I'm working hard, guys. So. I got about a two inch layer. We definitely want to go deeper. So something that is very important and notable with this species, um, as I said before, is that they're omnivores. So omnivores mean that they like to eat plant matter as well as protein matter. So it's very important that the plants and other things that you're using, that they are safe if ingested. So it's making sure that the plants that you're using, that if you're bluey would some reason get the idea to want to eat, he will do it, and he or, he or she can do it without the repercussions of potentially getting sick. Um, so let me see here. So next what I'm going to do is now that I have in about three 36 core bags, I'm going to be adding one more. I got a good amount of spag moss here, and I'm actually going to put this in to get it uh, hydrated up. Ah, that's my Miss King. Going off in the middle of the day here. Okay. All right. This shouldn't be too bad. So let me tell you, this stuff is getting harder and harder to get, guys. I've actually been trying to find maybe something else that is just as good. And it's challenging, but New Zealand struggled this year with their harvest. You can get some from Chile, but the quality is good, but the process isn't as, from my understanding, is not as friendly for the environment. I don't know. 
I need to learn a little bit more about it. So next I'm gonna take my sphagnum, my triple A grade sphagnum moss. So BioDudes moss, it's not gonna have a lot of sticks, thorns in it, cause you can get the spag, the cheap stuff with these thorns. Let me tell you, man, getting those things stuck in between your fingers freaking sucks. All right, so I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna start with this. And then I'm gonna do a nice even layer. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are asking, well, bio dude, blue tongue skinks, well, this one in particular, this Indo, they need high humidity. So the humidity in here is gonna stay fairly consistent, uh, you know, throughout the day. And then it's gonna have your, you know, your highs. I'm not using a drainage layer because A, since we're a burrowing species of a lizard, you wanna make sure that you don't have a, a, an accessible drainage layer to the lizard or snake because all then all it takes is for them to mix up that layer in with your soil and you're going to have a bad time. So with the firma, with how well it aerates and with the job that it does, that's not something you really need to be co uh, concerned about as long as you are maintaining the humidity requirements of your animal with proper aeration. Now you and I both know that PVC cages, they retain a lot of heat, they retain a lot of everything. So a little goes a long way. So I used a good amount of moss in here. Um, but what I'm, but now what I'm gonna do is I have a nice top layer. Now I'm gonna thoroughly mix all of this in, but before I do that, I'm actually gonna add in some of my inoculants. So this is my BioShot. Now this has all your essential strains of your uh, different bacteria, uh, sorry, uh, different fungi. Um, as well as it has a 444 NPK ratio for nitrogen for your plants, and it is all 100% organic. And essentially what it does is it jumpstarts your terrarium to have the ability to start harnessing the back end processes um, of decomposing plant matter and turning it into viable energy for your soil and your plant roots, forming symbiotic relationships amongst other things. So after you get all your bio shot mixed in, since I'm gonna be using four bags, I did four 36 quart shots of bio shot. That makes sense. Then I'm gonna get a, a nice layer of leaf litter. So this is some large oak. So then I'm gonna take the leaf litter and I'm just gonna scatter some of this on the top. Now, I'm gonna be really careful that I, as I start mixing, that I do not uh, get it in the tracking. That is super important. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna go here at the bottom and I'm just gonna start mixing. And I'm gonna be focusing all the mixing in the back, not towards the front. So that way the glass doesn't get as dirty. And so that way the dust is limited. Now I recommend letting the, these tanks cycle uh, for at least a week so you can get your temps right because it is completely different with PVC cages in my opinion with with the type of wattage you have to use from the type of uh, sorry the type of humidity lack of misting or more or whatever you need to do can be a little bit different which can sometimes put newer keepers on more of an edge so that's the one thing that I recommend is just making sure that you have a good understanding and good readings of your environment to do that. So you can do that with a thermometer hygrometer uh, that I sell. You can do that with a temp gun. Uh, we're also going to be routinely checking all of our UVB sites with our solar meter. Uh, and we do that quarterly to make sure that A, we're not overdoing it or we're not underdoing it. Uh, you know, to make sure that everything is, uh, that everything is clean. Okay. All right, I'm going to take some of this. I actually found a stick in there that I don't like. I'm taking that out. Okay. All right. So when I do this, Mixing all these biodegradables up in here is really helpful in multiple ways. One, one of the ways is it provides fuel stations as they slowly break down for your different organic processes that you've instilled from the bio shot. 
It provides food for your uh, cleanup crew. Now for blue tongues, there's a lot of different cleanup crews. You can try some of the darkling beetles. Uh, they should be okay with the level of humidity. Um, you can also try to put in some mealworms in here that'll evolve into the small black beetles. You can also use springtails and isopods. And that's actually what I'm gonna add next. So the first thing that I'm gonna add, which by the way, everybody that participated in the bug sale over the course of November, sorry, um, October, appreciate you. So I got some powder blues right here. So powder blues, I expect to take over the top layer pretty, pretty quickly. And then we also have the purples. So the purples are gonna stay deep in the substrate layers, helping us aerate and do everything else. So you can kind of see us moving right here. Okay. And I'm dumping them on the cool end and then of course, the springtails. Now, for an enclosure this size, I'm probably going to be routinely adding in some springtails uh, and some isopods as the tank matures so I can kind of see how we do. All right, then I'm just going to kind of cover this up. There we go. Get them all mixed in there. Next, I am now going to take a little bit more moss, just a little bit, and I'm going to create humid opportunity zones that are a little bit more than the others on both sides. One for the cool side and one for the hot side. And how I'm gonna achieve that is I am just gonna take some of this moss here and I'm just gonna leave it right on the top. Now, of course, you can expect the moss that's here near the heat bulb to dry out extremely quickly and that's kind of the point. Um, it can provide very, very short but very hot humidity spikes, which can be helpful at some points, especially um, if they're going through a shed cycle. Whereas over here, you're going to have high humidity that's going to last a lot longer, but at a cooler temperature. So if they just want to go chill and vibe out, it's what they can do. See, I love hims or hers. I don't know. But guys, I'm excited for the poll for the name. It's going to rule. Okay, so we got the terra firma mixed in with the Bioshot. We got some leaf litter with some AAA spag moss mixed in to help create humidity and fungal and bacterial opportunity zones. Next, I'm gonna start adding some decor and figuring out what's gonna go where. So one very important function with blue tongue skinks is you wanna make sure that you're providing a cool side hide and a hot side hide for most reptiles. So I've been saving this bad boy for some time and I'm excited to use it. So, uh, okay. All right, now just bear with me for one second. So, first thing I gotta figure out is where am I gonna put the, the submerged hides, which are these flats. So the first one, okay, I can deal with that. So I can take this one out. I can move this, watch the bulb right here. So remember how I put this moss here? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna push it down like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this and go right like this, boom. And then that gives this little one all the opportunity to dig whatever we may please, as well as there's a bunch of spag moss down here underneath, which is a really good opportunity zone, again, for hydration. And if we're resting in here, which a lot of times we will be, it's where I started the cleanup crew. As you can see, there's a powder blue angry that I'm messing with its house. Don't worry, dude. We're almost done, okay. So, they guys don't do a lot of climbing. And that's okay, because I'm not designing this cage that way. If you're gonna give them stuff, you give them things with not a high vertical, things that it's very easy for them to grab onto and slowly get their way up. Ugh.
I'm going to do the same thing over here. Except that moss is going to go right down in there. And then I'm going to take this. Like that. As I just like burn myself on the bulb. So I never work on the bulb side. I like to have it on so I can kind of get a gauge on how hot it's going to be for specific plants. Okay. Then we got this bad boy right here. Patty fuzz. Okay. Okay. So I want this cage to be open for him because again, when we get big, you know, when he starts, when he gets about this big, that's when I'll be taking him out of here. But until then, we're going to enjoy what we got. So the plants that I have, to my knowledge, are just fine to be ingested. I am going to be going out of my way to try and find some mint plants and some hibiscus plants this weekend. And if I do, when I do his individual video about him, I will make sure to uh, uh, show you guys that as well. So this plant right here, it's going to need a lot of trimming as it grows, but it's going to get pushed over. It's going to grow, but I'm looking forward to see how that does. We have some really good looking Sanservias here, which I'm going to got to get these guys rooted up. Okay. Now, what I really like about the, about these guys is that their axles, I guess you can call them axles, hold water. So, Sometimes that can be an opportunity zone right here because as you missed, water will collect in here and it just makes it, just makes it really easy. Okay. Now let me see here. And again, we're, I'm going to be adding a bunch of, uh, bunch of bugs in here as well. And I'm excited to show you, to see how this tank holds up. All right, so those two right there. Then we got a, a Dracenia and a bird's nest fern. Now, these guys can handle some, these guys can handle some, uh, some heat. So I'm actually gonna put this guy right here. Okay that's right by that hide here. So hopefully this root, root system will provide some structure. And then this bird's nest fern. Sorry about that noise, guys. I know that's a terrible. Okay, right like that. I dig it. So something I started offering at my point of sale is some of our large show grade moss collected right here in Northern Texas. Some good looking stuff. You can also get other types of uh, lichens and other things attached to it. So I am actually going to be using some of this and putting it in here and seeing how it does with Blabo here. And I have two different types and I'm going to actually put both of them in. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try it on the actual substrate and we're going to see how, how it does. So this I've actually been growing in my office for some time. I'm going to make sure that we keep it away from the, uh, from, uh, keep, keep it away from the heat. Okay. And I want to make sure it has good access to light as well. I'm anxious to see how this does because again, maybe it'll get Maybe when he gets bigger, it might get utterly demolished, but we're going to see, see how it does. Okay. So other, I guess, so other plants, guys, you got mint, basil, rosemary, hibiscus. You can even try some species, uh, some species of cacti won't work for indos, but northerns that like it a little drier, you, you, you can get away with that. Um, you can also try to grow different grasses in here. 
which they might be as well, uh, they might enjoy. So, so I got some moss put on the side here, you know, really sporadic, different places. I also have some of my flatter moss here. Now, this moss I'm not going to be able to use. This is mainly strictly for flora setup, but once it really gets going, it's going to be the light. You can see how this grows. So when I get some flora enclosures that need some stuff in there, I'll be sure to use this stuff and show you guys. I wanted to have it in here just to show you. But this is one of the only few mosses that I've used that I can actually use, use it for firma. All right, and I'm actually gonna take this and I'm actually gonna put this right there. All right, water dish. Got a nice corner bowl here and I always put the cricket in there to prevent any insects from drowning. And I'm actually gonna put that right here. Okay. I'm gonna have to say I, I'm pleased with it. I think, I think it looks good. Um, I think there's a lot of places. Again, I'm gonna be paying real close attention to this hot spot right here. And if I feel it's gonna be too hot, um, I'm gonna make sure to remove it and I'm gonna make sure to put you know, a lower wattage bulb in there, but there's a good opportunities for UVB in there. Everything is illuminated up nicely. So I think all that's left is put the little dude in here. All right. And I couldn't be more prouder of, uh, of my wife going doing her surgery gig with this little dude and having good success because anesthesia can be tricky for reptiles because they're hard to wake up uh, because they're because they move so slow internally so all right little dude be free So pretty pleased here with how this turned out, guys. I really appreciate everyone's support. Please let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. Yeah, my name is Josh Halter, owner and founder of the Bio Dude. Come visit my store, Bio Dude Houston, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturdays, 10 to 2. Visit my website. Come, come, come visit this little dude. Pay him a visit. Dude abides.